this is why I converted to Judaism to be a part of Am Israel and this is this is the meaning of Am Israel so actually we have we have the luxury here of having too much support for the people that you know face these types of situations but the it still begs the question how do we either rectify the lives lost on both sides and move on or is it an actual question of biblical decimation do we have to treat this like Amalek back in the day is this is this the call to action now is this what's is this what's going to bring Mashiach and that by the way I will say a lot of Goyim are afraid of the answer to that question guys thank you so much for getting us to 270 subscribers I can't even believe it thank you so much for liking and subscribing if you want to talk to us send us an email at muzzle tough tube at gmail.com. All righty. Howie Dano and Ilan Eckhart. Ilan Eckhart volunteered at the Teleshomer Hospital in the first week after the October 7th manicure, massacre. Excuse me. Get it together, Mayor. <laughs> I'm trying to, and I'm not laughing about that. I want to be very clear. And Howie Dano has been transporting supplies and aid to the victims and families of victims, all while, from what I understand, going to the front lines to boost morale musically. Guys, thank you so much for joining us, and oh, thank, thank you, you so us. much for doing everything you're doing. Thank you for having us, guys. Wow. Pleasure to be here. Hell yeah. Well, I'm Yisrael Chai. I just want to get that out of the way. So people know my opinion. And uh, Elon, you sound like you're. Oh, uh, well, where where are Elon, you? Elon, are you, yeah, Elon, are you are you filming for are a bunker? You, are you like in the bomb shelter as we speak? <laughs> I'm in the middle of uh, yeah, it, no, I'm I'm not. Um, I was I was about to make a, a joke, but uh, you know, you can't you be can too it. careful these days. If you make a joke, you could be uh. You know, wah, wah, wah. <laughs> not not here, not on muzzle. Uh, mu muzzle tough is a uh, very much a free speech. Mostly, don't just don't make that one joke. You know, you know the one. Yeah, the one that we talked mm. about. Well, we so let's about see, let's see if we if we got it straight. Um, Elon, did I get it right? You volunteered w uh, in, within the first week at uh, at a hospital after the October seventh massacre. How was that? That's right. Um. So I went with an acapella group that I performed with, and uh, we were we were there within the first week of the attack, and you know, you know, every every room at the place was packed. You know, there was there was not an empty room in the hospital. Um, lots of the uh, lots of the people that had gone through the attacks um you know were extremely traumatized you know the trauma ward was was packed with people um and you know we went room to room singing for people some of the people you know couldn't handle it because because it was know, either, a cappella you know they were in exactly exactly no they uh you know people come throughout the day everybody wants to help out and people come throughout the day and it can be very intense to receive that much support surprisingly you know so uh so actually we have we have the luxury here of having too much support for the people that you know face these types of situations um but you know it's a blessing but you know ultimately there was a lot of very very uh crazy stories that i heard of uh of resilience after getting wounded to levels that you wouldn't think that a person could survive through those types of scenarios and, you know, people sacrificing their lives to save other people. And um, just, you know, the, the, the strength of the human spirit and specifically of the, of the Jewish spirit was, was just so apparent in the, uh, you know, in that first, in that first week. And, and since then, you know, also, but, you know, um, it really, it, gave me uh it gave me a lot of strength moving forward you know that you know these people you know have seen the worst of it and they have not lost hope so why should we yeah, yeah and um 
Howie, you're the wheels on the road from what I understand is you're bringing supplies and, and morale to basically whoever needs it. Yeah. So, uh, I, I, I started it at the, at the second day of the war. Um, when I heard it, you know, after Simchat Torah, you know, there was a part of me that couldn't believe, you know, the numbers, couldn't believe the images. And, and also there was a part of me that like really wanted to just, you know, give back what, what, what the people that lost their life, just give, give back whatever I have. Um, to their families, to their friends, and to the soldiers that are fighting right now, um, and had you know had to fight um, when the war started. So I uh, I managed to to organize a group of of drivers, um, um, like you know, not not anything you know from the government. Civilians, simple civilians, um, with trucks, and we went um, like six uh, private cars to one truck, and one truck to to the south, and we uh, started uh, started exporting uh, supplies um, to soldiers, mostly food. Uh, the first day, the second day, the first time that we went, it was food because they didn't have any. Mm. Um, the you know the logistics of of the of the IDF at the at the, at the first days like I think till day the fifth day was um it was terrible the you know there was no there's not there was not enough supplies to everyone so we just had to do what what we need to do right um and. I uh I had a feeling that someone you know with my um, ability to just connect with people um, and with my social media um, just to find drivers and just to to do it and also I oh, really I wanna I wanna to uh, to mention the those the, the, the my group of drivers that. You know, they risk their life to do it. Yeah, and no one's getting paid to do this either, right? Like, no, this is all no. volunteering. No, on the second week, I uh, started raising money um, to the, to, you know, not to get a lot of money, just to cover the, 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 the gas yeah. and to cover, you know, this, you know, simple, you know, maybe food for, for the drivers. Um, so, yeah. Um, that's what we uh, we did. Um, I think at the uh, at the third week, uh, it started to the idea started to st stabilize. I think more than the first one. And then I started to perform to uh, refugees and to uh, soldiers. Um, the first, my first show was to uh, Berry uh, refugees. Mm. Um, that was the the hardest thing to ever experience um you see you see torn families and you meet you know kids that they 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 lost their childhood um and and yeah also i wrote i wrote a song about uh, about a kid that i met there um and from there and it's talking about um, he's he he basically lost his family, and he's uh, nine years old. And you know, just thinking about it, you know, he's nine years old, just a kid, who you know, and 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 family and pa you know, parents, something that that you, that you think about that it's not a thing that you know, it's it's not given, but but in that age, it's, it is. Um, right. And for me, I, I lost my, 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 my dad when I was 16 and you can't really realize that till now, you can't really realize that there's a reality without a parent. Um, 
when you have it, you know, from, from day one. So yeah, that's what we're trying to do. We're just trying to, to bring uh, good energy to the refugees um, and, you know, also supplies, whatever they need. And this is, this is why I converted to Judaism to be a part of Am Israel, and this is, this is the meaning of Am Israel. Can I ask a question out of pure ignorance? Yeah. So, who are the refugees? I'm just curious. Because the I'm refugees? not... Yeah, are the refugees from Israel or from Palestine? No, no, for, from Israel. From Israel? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, only from Israel. Okay. I don't think that we let refugees, like Palestinians, refugees in Israel. I don't think so. I'm only I'm only asking because I don't know. I mean, yeah. So so here's the statistic. So up until this point, there's been about two hundred to two hundred fifty thousand uh, Israelis displaced within Israel. Um, both from the attacks down south that happened, as well as uh, evacuees from the north, since uh, Lebanon has been uh, firing rockets at Israel also uh, since October seventh, and uh, some of these uh, some of these missiles that they're sending, um, they're they're shorter range missiles, but they're powerful. So it's it's a uh, it's a risk. So they had to evacuate a bunch of the north and they evacuated um, a bunch of the south, um, including cities like Sirot. And I'm sure that you're familiar with. I at least have heard about it. Yeah. Um, I didn't know that of... Lebanon was involved, to be completely honest. I, in America, I've only been hearing about Gaza. I haven't even heard anything about the West Bank, to be honest with you. I didn't even know Lebanon was a part of Ben. Did you know? I mean, Brig. I mean, I, I assume that it was kind of all the neighboring countries are kind of in it now. Is that That's correct? Exactly. Yeah. Um, sort of. Um, Jordan and Egypt are kind of, uh, you know, sort of with Israel. It's hard to explain. Like, like they're politically not, but militarily, I'd say they are. Um, at least at the moment, um, as far as Lebanon and the West Bank, you know, there's a few interesting things about that. You know, the first thing is, is that, you know, people, people say that there's not Hamas in the West Bank. Um, and that's just simply not true. Um, it happens to be that the ruling party is Fatah, which is, uh, the Palestinian authority. So Hamas doesn't run the West Bank. You know, they're not the political, they're not the elected leader of the West Bank, but that doesn't mean that there's no Hamas there. You know, um, there's plenty of Hamas there and Palestinian Islamic Jihad, and there's a few organizations that people don't talk about. I thought it was, was is Hezbollah out there or am I, am I crossing my facts? Yeah, they're, uh, yeah, they're also involved. And you have the Houthis in, uh, in Yemen that are also involved at this point. And they all work together, like they have like a unified thing, or is it just kind of like depending on where you are, that's who you're fighting, kind of thing? So the Houthis are are targeting um, a lot primarily, and um, and then you have Hezbollah, Hezbollah in the north, and you have uh, and you have you know Hamas and a bunch of organizations uh, within uh, Gaza and in uh, the West Bank. Um, as well as you also have Hamas uh, in Lebanon as well. You know they're not they're not as as present there, but they have they have some Hamas uh, in Lebanon as well. So I I guess um so I guess here's an interesting question. I don't know if this is a good question or not. We're about to find out. But like, do you guys where where do you guys see this going? Like, do you see like how 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 will this progress or how will it dissipate like is is or is it just going to be like more of this you think or is i heard like recently there's like some uh ceasefire or something like that is that happening right now so i want to let howie go on this one uh and and hear hear what he has to say about it and then i'll and then i'll give my two cents 
Uh, I, I wanted to hear you, but okay, I'll go go first. Okay, I'll <laughs> go, guys. Fine, I'll I'll go. I'll go ahead, yeah. Um. So how I see it, you know, you know, before the war, there was a big, a big, 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 you know, conflict within us, within Am Israel, right? And now, like at the like. I'll give the, uh, the example of the the first the, the the second day we went to the to the south. With me, there were a lot of incredible people, and if they were religious, and there were some that not religious, really secular, mm-hmm. and and talking about if we talk about Am Israel, I I I could see the, the you know the Geula, I could see the like I could see it coming. I see the you know the Mashiach. I really like. I believe in it. Uh, What's the Gula? What's that? The, the Gula? What is that? Gula. Uh, Gula. The, re- the redemption of the Messianic yes. era. Got it. Yeah, I I I see it coming, and I see it coming, and I see it in Am Israel, and I can tell you that a lot of. Also, a lot of I, I volunteer a lot. I, I meet a lot of secular people, uh, secular people, uh, and you know, Jewish, and they can see it too. And you know, when you, when you're the one that's the, the see the the you know see the, the ex- expect to Mashiach, and also you, you see a lot of you know a lot of people, a lot of kind of people. I believe in a lot of believe they used to believe in different things that what I believe seeing the 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 messianic the messianic era you could really feel it you know you could feel it here in in Israel um and with how I see it with you know the the Palestinians here in Gaza you know it's like in uh, Sefer, uh, in uh, in the book of Yoshua, mm-hmm. when they got into Israel, we we talked about it, me and Ila, and there were, I I I I don't think I, I don't I told you that I, I converted to Judaism, to Judaism right? Mm-hmm. So yeah, I, I converted to Judaism, and before uh, my uh, before I converted, I learned uh, the book of uh, Yoshua. We talk uh, talking about. Um, Am Israel getting into uh, like Moses passed away, Yeshua is leading Am Israel, and they're going into um, to Eretz Israel. Um, and and my rabbi, me and my rabbi, we, we uh, he, he he taught me uh, the book of Yeshua, and we talked about you know um, destroying and exterminating um, uh, um, like you know Amim uh, Goim. Mm-hmm. And inside of Israel, mm-hmm. and some of and you know some of this you know some of the story like it didn't fit really like logically in my head you know because you know how, why like there were a long history you know the, the Christianity do it did it long history you know just destroyed and exterminated um, uh, cultures. But why do we need it? We we need to do it. And then um, a week uh, um, uh, a week ago, my rabbi uh, he returned from uh, uh, from the army, and now we understand like why. Like we have the we have the the the, the tools to understand why Am Israel did it. So the the same cultures. Uh, that was that, that were inside of Israel. Like I, I learned it from Elam because we, we 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 talked about it. They were uh, sacrificing um, babies and sacrificing. You know, the same thing that going right. Listen, I married. wanted no, I wanted to bring that up, and you know the fact is, I wanted to bring up everything that you're touching on right now, which is amazing. <laughs> I wanted to bring up the fact that people do see the Gula coming and and the and the Mashiach and all of this thing. And in America, both sides are forced down my my throat, so to speak. You know what I mean? Because I'm Jewish, 
I'm as I'm as Zionist as they come. The Zionist is the next man, as long as the next man isn't Mel Gibson. And um and hey, uh, you know, and but at the same time, I'm also getting fed a lot of the pro-Palestinian, dare I even say pro-Hamas content that is floating around the internet on Instagram these days. But a lot of people are mentioning the same thing you just mentioned. This could be a, a redemptive era for this side or that side. You know, look, there's babies killing. I mean, baby, what? I hate to be the one to throw out these hardball questions. But if babies are being killed on both sides, how could we say that this is leading to the uh, the redemption? And like you said, why does it need to happen? Is there a better way? Do you see it? Do you, is there a two state solution? Is there a one state solution? These are the oldest questions in the book, but we touched on them, and so now we have to answer them. What's the yes. way out of this? So you know, I'm I'm I'm, I'm gonna step back again to the, to the book of Yeshua when I talked about it with my rabbi. Um, I, ta- uh, I I asked him like really honestly like like it sounds brutal like that we yeah. had to do it right uh, like Ami Slayer and does Hashem really want us to do it and there's a thing called um, um, in Hebrew it's called um, uh, milcham, milchemet reshut and there's milchemet mitzvah it's like um, mitzvah. Let's call it if it's a uh, war for mitzvah. It's what it's exactly what happened with Sefer Yeshua. Okay, um, reshut is more. Um, it's not really a war that, necess- that is necessary, but mitzvah is a, a war that need to be happened with Hashem. So how do we right. deem? Obviously, I want to say right now, Hamas started this war on October 7th when they brutally attacked and massacred innocent civilians. You know, I want to say that this war, everything that happens is completely on Hamas. But the it still begs the question, how do we either rectify the lives lost on both sides and move on? Or is it an actual question of, biblical decimation do we have to treat this like amalek back in the day is this is this the call to action now is this what's is this what's going to bring mashiach and that by the way i will say a lot of goyim are afraid of the answer to that question you know and i don't well, blame them yeah yeah but i think that it, it is amalek it's amalek it's it's pure evil and we have it in, in our torah we have it in our nevuot, and we have it, we have uh, Elon can say a lot a lot of uh, psukim from from those nevuot, and like uh, Tehillim Pafstein. Um, there's you know the power of the power of evil. We're fighting the actual power of evil right now, and this is Amalek, and we we saw it, and I can tell you what. When I um, when I went to the to to the south and the second day transporting the supplies, you know, there were you know there there were a lot of military uh, um, uh, cars and then vehicles and uh, you know tanks and everything, but not it wasn't it wasn't c- fully c- controlled like in a hundred percent. You could still see. Um, Bodies. You could still see um, cars that have been um, shot. You could still see the blood. You could still smell it. Smell it. You could see smell the smoke. And you know, it's a war zone, but more. But it's not just a war zone. It's. It was. Uh, you, you could really feel the presence of of evil. And and this is. And I think this is why deep inside me, I, 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 I felt that I had to go on the second day of the war. Because you can't really, 
you can't really understand it like until you really see it um and even then it's hard so that's how i see it we don't really have any choice any other choice and am israel is you know they always we always say we're we're the chosen chosen people right we chose we, we were chose for something and i think this is this something right now and we need to stop this the whole this whole thing this whole war and if it's not us no one will really no one could really know we're in the middle east it's not a regular regular western country can no I one ask really you, knew. can i ask yeah. you a question then so, well what if it wasn't the middle east what if all the jews decided to go to montana so here's the answer it would not make sense for us to go to montana on a cause... theological level, I understand. On a theological level, I understand it wouldn't make sense. It's about the land. It's about God's dwelling. But let's put the survival of our people first here. And let me just say, what if it was government sanctioned? The U.S. said, here, have Montana and all of its resources. It's beautiful. And Israelis will do a great job with Montana. Believe me, it'll be a great. All right. What would happen next if everyone, we all move to Montana, we we give Israel to the Palestinians, to the Jordanians, to the Egyptians, whoever want, they could fight over it, and all the Israelis, just theoretically, would that solve at least the fact that, would it, would it solve the genocide? Would, would, it, would it solve the murder, the attacks? It would, it would put, it would put Jews into a situation where um you know they're they're even more indefensible than they are at the moment you know um a big part of the reason that we're able to thrive right now as jews or have been up until this point over the past you know 70 75 years is because of the fact that you know we have a military and we are our own sovereign country in our in our homeland and you know that's a big element of it also is that you know you could you can move us to montana but that's not our homeland and and beyond that you know if you look at if you look at the the way that things have been uh in exile up until the establishment of the state of israel and even afterwards you know um things weren't good for jews then either you know that's when that's when the Holocaust happened. That's when uh, the pogroms happened. That's when the Farhud happened. That's when um, the Spanish Inquisition happened. Babi Yar, um, you know, a, a ton of a ton of massacres throughout North Africa and the Middle East um, during that entire period. So um, I don't believe that if you take if you take Jewish people out of the land of Israel, that that's going to solve anything. I think. It'll I do nothing to protect Jews, is what you're saying. Yeah, and also our temple was here. Our Bet Mikdash was here. And, we, and if we're talking about, you know, the redemption, you know, it's building the third and hopefully the last Bet Mikdash, right? Yeah, and everyone uh -huh. agrees on that, actually, which is the funniest part about it. Yes. So, you know, after this, the, the October 7th here in Israel, um, I, I hear it a lot. You know, you could, you know, I, I hear it a lot because I'm, I'm, I'm there in the South and there's a lot of people asking me that it's not that safe. And, you know, the reality was before the, 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 the 7th of October that nothing, you know, that if if you told someone you know here in Israel that um, the hundreds of terrorists will infiltrate Israel and do all those things before the seventh of October, it wasn't even you know you can't really can't even talk about it because it's it's not something that could happen and it happened right 
So the same thing any, anywhere. So for being a Jew outside of Israel is is worse than being, you know, a Jew here in, in I, I think, I, I see it like, like that because it, it is, it is threatening, you know, there, there's, there's the power of, there's that power of evil that wants to exterminate us, exterminate Jews. Jews. Yeah, I mean, uh, tonight, on the night of recording this episode, is the first night of Hanukkah. And I will, I will admit to you that uh, I did feel a type of way about lighting my menorah tonight. Obviously, I'm, I'm going to do it. But I would be lying to you. I would be lying to you if I didn't feel a type of way, a little trepidation, a little nervousness about it. And Ben, do you feel any type of way? We live in vastly different parts of the of the country. Um, um what you mean as far as like, like putting out like a bat signal that like putting out the, here? the putting out the Jewish bat signal? Yeah, are you going to do it tonight? Um, I mean, I plead the fifth, but I I don't do it anyway. But um, in my mind, shame in the it you know locks behind no i mean listen i you know i'm gonna i'll, I'll probably you know throw up one concert candle you know well also like this, jewish pride in the united states is at an all-time high which is a unfortunate uh i guess it's the most fortunate side effect for the worst fortunate event the, the most unfortunate event and um it's good to see Ah, uh, do we have any hard? We have five minutes left, and I'd like to throw you guys some hardball questions, but it's hard since I'm a, I completely agree with everything you're saying. Ben, what do you have? Well, okay, I guess I guess I kind of have. Well, let me, let me get serious. Sorry, this is a bit of a bit, so we'll see. Okay, I, I I have I think I have a suggestion for how we can fix this whole thing. You ready? Yeah. Yeah. Tell me you guys are there, so you guys would know if this would actually work. But I think if we had if we had Mr. Beast go to Israel and just start making people compete in random games for like huge amounts of money, they'll just forget. They'll just it's like every everyone will just be like Mr. Beast, like, if you can stay on like in the shook for like two weeks and only eat shook food, like that kind of thing, you know what I mean? You get a thousand dollars a day, and just everyone will be there, and like they're just gonna forget. Am I right or wait? Am I right? Wait, you wait. You can only eat shook food. You have to pay yeah. way more than a thousand dollars a day, dude. I don't know. That's the that's the contest, and that's, it's um... it's hard work, and everyone's allowed. You could just just show up, show up at the shook. Elon's out. Elon's so offended. Okay, no. uh, <laughs> show up at the shook and uh, and uh, compete, Mister B style. What do you guys think? Would that work? I think I think uh, you know. It's it's very interesting that you that you ask that question. I think that there's a lot of uh, use for people that um, are trying to make positive change in the world actually coming here and seeing what's going on. You know, yes. we saw Elon Musk coming um, last week, and you there's know, also the the, the Australian uh, actor from a uh, Vampire Diary, Nathaniel Nathaniel Arnold Schwarzenegger. Um, it's Austrian. He's Austrian. He's a vampire, though, so pretty close. Yeah, but i I had a thought about uh, I had a thought about Elon Musk. You know, a lot of people were asking him, you know, why he didn't go to Gaza and stuff like that. And you know, I, I had a I had a thought about it that you know it's he's a rocket maker, you know, and all they're doing is shooting these rockets that are literally made out of water pipes that are given for humanitarian aid, okay? I don't think that he would be interested in going to see that. I you know, and also, and also it sounds really, <laughs> if he was, uh, it was an hostage, um, for, you know, if, if they kidnapped Elon Musk, it would be the actual origin story of Iron Man from Marvel mm -hmm. Comics. Ooh, yeah, you don't want to risk that. That's actually That's right. a valid <laughs> point. Valid point. It's the same thing, you know. Oh. You have Tom mm -hmm. Bill's Rockets, multi-billionaire, 
God yeah. damn. Wow. And the AI God, you know? It could have yeah. happened. Oh my God. Imagine guys... that. Imagine that we have All Iron right. Man. I want to do a rapid fire, uh, rapid fire questions. We're, we're doing rapid fire hardball questions with muzzle tough. Uh, Elon, your army is killing babies. What do you have to say about that? Well, uh, there's a very big difference in between uh, targeted strikes, which is what Israel is doing, versus what Hamas did, which was deliberately targeting civilians and taking their time to specifically mutilate and butcher them. And uh, totally. there's there's evidence Howie. that can be provided. Yeah, Howie. Yeah, the, the IDF is way more well armed and well personnelled versus Hamas, who's clearly the underdog here. Go easier on them. No question mark. Solid. No, no. Solid response. I would also say that uh, really quick. These guys are also musicians, by the way. Oh yeah. yeah. They they make music. You, do you, you want to do a quick uh quick shameless plug while you're here? We still got a minute. Okay. I could do something. Ooh, are you going to sing something? You're gonna, wait, you're going to do something live? Actual... That's what I'm talking about. See, that's a real musician right there. Live plug. Let's go. Live plug. Let's go. So this is my... song yeah. Oh, yeah. That I wrote about the kids. <laughs> Bruises, arms, and legs, weight, eyes, I've seen it. Where do I even begin? Don't know where I am, too young to understand. It's painful to even pretend. Heaven's rain. Joe's cry, see all answers can't stop asking me why. I'm in the sky, in the sky. I didn't if you back. Guys, in case it cuts out, we have less than a minute. I want to say thank you so much for joining us. Please like and subscribe to Elon and Howie's channels tagged in the description of the video down below. If you don't support